What if you could put pancakes in a glass? RD1 has given it their best shot. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Bourbon Hutch, and thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So, just to give you a little glimpse behind the scenes of The Bourbon Hutch, for me, probably my favorite category of food is breakfast food. Give me French toast with, you know, nice maple syrup or pancakes, stuff either one of them with like a cream cheese or put a fruit layer on top of them, and I'm basically in heaven. So that gives you a little inkling of why a maple syrup finished bourbon certainly caught my eye and is one that I definitely wanted to review for you all. So in that spirit, today we are reviewing RD1's maple and oak finished bourbon. So let's start with RD1 themselves, the story there, because this is one that I hadn't heard much about until I did a little research and got this bottle. So RD1, that name stands for Registered Distillery Number One. Ashland Distillery, I believe, was the first ever registered distillery in Lexington, Kentucky. So not the first registered distillery. Uh, I believe that was DSP number one is Bernheim Distillery which is now owned by Heaven Hill, if I'm not mistaken. But this one in Lexington was the first registered distillery, which is a pretty cool one. And as we've seen with a lot of bourbon brands, with the bourbon boom going on, these older brands are being revived. And so in Lexington here, RD1 has sort of taken up that mantle, revived that Ashland distillery story, and they have started producing spirits. They began back in 2020, I believe, sort of revamping the brand. RD1 now has about a handful of different products. They started with the regular old small batch, which I believe has a mash bill of 70% corn, 21% rye, so pretty decent rye quantity there, and then 9% malted barley, aged at least four years, which is pretty solid. And then they've done a couple of finishes. I know that they've got an Amberana finish, and they've got this maple finished bourbon as well. This one, comes in around 60 to $65. So for a finished bourbon, not too bad. And nice presentation overall. They've done a really nice job. The, the brown here matches the kind of maple syrup finish that you're expecting. So just overall nice label. Story here and stats on this particular bottle. So it's a Kentucky straight bourbon, finished, double finished actually, it says in oak and maple barrels. My understanding is they take staves of like maple syrup barrels and uh, it might be French oak. I'll put somewhere if I'm wrong about that into the barrel for extra aging. Proof here is 99.9 .9 proof, so basically 100 proof. And again, it's like 60 to 65 bucks. So definitely caught my attention. I was able to actually taste this in the store against all their other lineup. Uh, somebody from RD1, I guess, was representing the brand. I forget his name. Apologies for that, but. Got to taste through their lineup, and this one just stood out as extremely powerful for a finished whiskey. So excited to dive in. Again, it's just, I love sweet things. That's why I've gravitated toward bourbon pretty heavily in my own, you know, whiskey spirit journey. So let's dive in. Let's give this thing a fair shake and see how it stands up on the nose, palate, and finish. And if you haven't heard of RD1 or you're, you know, just starting to learn about them, um, William Tarr is another brand name that they've been, you might have seen on bottles, that's them. So if you haven't heard much about them, hopefully this can be a nice introduction for you. And it was a nice introduction for me. So let's dive in on the nose. Oh yeah, that's what I remember. It is French toast in a glass. Maple syrup, big time. A little bit of cinnamon kick but not much. Roasted pecans for days, like so roasty toasty. Vanilla cream as well. But yeah, that cinnamon brown sugar, French toast, roasted pecan, unbelievable. I mean, French toast with maple syrup drizzled on top of it, roasted pecans sprinkled on top. That's what you get. I mean, it is undeniably breakfast whiskey or dessert whiskey, depending on the mood you're in, but it is ultra sweet. If you were asking me if it's like perfectly balanced, no, it tends towards sweet, but I think it does it on purpose and intentionally to give you this very 
rich finished feel to it and it achieves it. All right, let's go in on the palette. Cheers. Yeah, it's nice. It's in drinking bourbon and finished bourbons in particular, I often have this problem where the nose promises so much and the palate under delivers. That's not necessarily the case here and I'm happy to say that. So much of what was on the palate is there. Really strong roasted pecan, really strong French toast, maple syrup for days. The brown sugar is delightful and almost toasted, a little bit bready of a quality. The only thing I can knock here is the mouthfeel and the texture, a little bit on the thinner side. But other than that, everything that was on the nose is being presented pretty much in full force. It really kind of comes up into the nose and you feel like you've almost inhaled this French toast in a glass. It, I, I've never tasted anything quite like it. It's really, really interesting how much the finish dominates the profile here and in a way that I actually enjoy. I'm actually starting to get just a touch of like an apple sweetness and a fruit sweetness, especially on the back end. All right, now that it's on the palate, let's go in for a second sip, see if we can pick out some more flavors. Cheers. Hmm. Yeah, that sip got a little bit ever so slightly more aggressive, just a touch of ethanol, but also more vanilla sweetness got introduced there, almost like a honey sweetness I'm picking up now. It's that maple syrup finish, Ma just pure maple syrup as well, like the really ultra sweet sugary concoction there. Mm. Very French toasty. Again, this just makes me think with that slightly less thick or viscous mouthfeel, it makes me think, what if this was a cast strength? What if they let it just present itself full force? I'd be really interested to see how that tastes. All right, let's go in for the third sip. We'll evaluate the finish and give you a recap of the whole experience here. Revisit the nose real quick. It's the same. I, I'm just still shocked by how much of this is maple syrup, French toast, breakfasty, full force. All right, cheers. Mm. Yeah, so one interesting quality here is it's got some spice, even a little bit of ethanol kick in the middle. But what the finish feels like is maybe a little bit lingering, but it's kind of a cool finish, like cool maple syrup, a more deep, well, sugary sweetness for sure. Kind of those cooler tones that kind of come across with vanilla, maybe a touch of that apple pure maple syrup, brown sugar, and a little touch of spice. It's good. It's good stuff. I, I think overall, just to get into that and recap the whole experience, for nose, I have never quite smelled a nose that is that brown sugar maple syrup forward. So really spectacular, especially if you're just in the mood for something super desserty. The palate carries through a lot of that it's a little bit thinner. It doesn't quite have the flavor punch that you'd expect from the nose. A little bit more of an ethanol touch in there, but it's still very, very solid. And I wouldn't say it's a disappointment from the nose. The nose is just like a 10 out of 10 for what you're expecting with the maple syrup finish. And the palate just doesn't quite deliver the viscousness that you want or feel from the nose, but overall, it's got a lot of the same flavors. Again, it would be really interesting to see this at Cast Strength. RD1, if you're out there, I would love to personally see it at Cast Strength, but it's already quite a phenomenal thing at 99.9 .9 proof. The other thing I wanted to comment on is being at that lower proof, and it's not a low proof though, but being at a slightly lower proof and this desserty and breakfasty this is a whiskey I've introduced non-whiskey drinkers to. That's why there's so much gone in this. I've only had it for a month, month and a half and been sharing it with people, especially those who haven't had whiskey much before because 
it's that sweet and that rich and I want them to have a nice first experience, kind of walk them towards something a little bit different, but uh, it really goes desserty, and I think it's a great introductory whiskey for people because of that. All right, those are my thoughts, everybody, on this RD1 maple and oak finished bourbon. It's one of the most rich, well done finishes that just goes full force after what it says it is, and I appreciate that 100%. Let me know in the comments below, have you been able to taste anything from RD1 and what did you think? I thought the rest of their stuff was pretty dang good too. Uh, have you been able to taste this maple syrup finish? What did you think? And are there any other maple syrup finishes that I should be checking out now that I've had this one? Till I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking good whiskey and cheers.